ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rule the Waves 2. Now, this is a really nostalgia trip for me here. Like, the Dual Monarch's Pride, my god, man, I made this uh, thumbnail, obviously I didn't do the art, but obviously I took the art, uh, but I did this thumbnail in 2015 for my first actual uh, legitimate Rule the Waves series. Uh, so yeah, that was 2015, my god, that has been four years. But you know what, I thought, well, with uh, finishing the Russia campaign, I might as well go to the, uh, to the start. So we're going to go with 1900 here, and we are going to play as Austria-Hungary. So, let's take a look at this then. Austria-Hungary, our leader is the Kaiser. Uh, our government type is limited democracy. Build areas is the Mediterranean. Now, it's going to be an interesting start. I mean, we do technically... I mean, let's take a look at the difference here, uh, differences here between um, ourselves and Russia, for example. We'll take a look at the other nations as well, try and compare. Now, the Russians start with 5,000 additional tons in their dockyards. The Germans, 14. The French, 16. The British, 16. Uh, the Italians, 15. The Japanese, 10. And the Americans, 14,000. So in a sense, we do find ourselves in a very interesting and similar position to the Japanese Empire. Notably, we have the same naval budget, but then again, uh, actually no, the Russians do have a larger budget there. So we do find ourselves in a uh, almost parallel position with the Japanese here as the Austrians. Uh, though, of course, the uh, Japanese do have far more advantages going for them. They do, of course, have an undeveloped shipbuilding industry, but they do have surprise attack. They do have research advantages into light forces and torpedo warfare. Uh, naval aviation, heavier than air, very good bonus there. I mean, their bonus technologists are what they start with, um, I think, off the bat, double torpedo mount. Uh, diving shells, that's rather intriguing. Oxygen fuel torpedo, air torpedoes, and lengthened torpedoes, which is pretty cool. So, there I see, Ah, oh, man. That's awesome, my dude. Similar, but with oil. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Um, obviously, the Japanese would find it far easier to find oil than we would. Uh, more expensive ships, but more tonnage for other things like armor and gun, indeed. See, uh, the thing that we do have going for us is, of course, the bonus technology of the triple turrets, but the research advantage into torpedo technology is very handy, actually. And we could have very effective submarines and destroyers, of course, light cruisers as well. Basically, anything that we have, we're going to go ahead and throw some torpedoes on there, uh, because why not? We should ideally have um, some of the best torpedoes. Like, the Japanese gain the bonus techs, but they don't have a research advantage into torpedo technology. I think we're the only ones who have that. So that's actually a nice advantage, that's something that we can really make use of. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. In the Dual Monarch's Pride. My god, it's been too long since I've said that. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here. We could go with fleet sizes. I'm going to go with a large fleet size there. Maybe very large. We'll go for broken. Let's go with very large. Let's think of a name here. Hmm. I like a good German name. We'll go with Wilhelm. And then again, what's the uh, Austrian name? Kaiser Karl. Kaiser Franz. Franz. Ferdinand. That sounds about right. Franz Ferdinand. There we go. So historical resources there. Uh, their technologies would be rather interesting, but I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to give the AI an advantage, and uh, I'm going to leave these two off here. I do like the legacy fleets. And very large fleet sizes seems the most historical. Yeah, for the most part. Oh, Otto. Hmm. We'll go with Otto Ferdinand, actually. That sounds rather intriguing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead here, man. So, AI advantage. Uh, so, they gain a 10% budget advantage to the AI nations. I mean, of course, that's going to present an even worse position. Um, but I'm happy with that. We'll build our way into dominance. And that's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting challenge. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we begin the game with then. So, I do begin the game here with four... Pre-Dreadnoughts, okay. We'll go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, so we have two different classes here. We have the Kaiser class and the Vienna class. Now, I mean, this is it. We're only limited to 10,000 tons. So these battleships, these pre-Dreadnoughts, uh, pre aren't exactly very large, are they? I mean, let's go ahead and take a look at the Almanac. And let's compare this to the British, for example. Yep, they've got a good 4,000, nearly 5,000 tons on top of us. The French, nearly 3,000 tons. 
They're already building nearly 6,000 ton larger ships. The Italians, yeah, have much larger ships than we do, and they have more of them. The Italian Navy is actually pretty competent, it seems. I mean, the rations as well, yeah, look at that, 15,500 tons, the Germans 13,000 tons, the Americans 13,000 tons. Yep. Yeah. We actually do have <laughs> the smallest navy here in terms of battleships, so that's going to be rather intriguing. Yep, I've got some Hearthstone music on here. I mean, what I do here then is actually use them, due to the fact they're copyright free, um, I've actually mixed some different tracks into here, actually. Let's see if I can find one. There is it. I have to give credit in the um, actual description, but let me find it. Here somewhere. I should have probably gone the other way. There we go, okay, that's one of the new tracks over here. Uh, so, Battle Plan. Now, it doesn't seem to show the Japanese are on here, which is rather intriguing. I'm sure they'll be there. Be kind of weird if they weren't. But either way, let's take a look at what we do have here, then. So, Nation Data. So, we do have one under construction. We do have uh, three heavy cruisers under construction. Well, armored cruisers. We do have five already, so three building. Eleven light cruisers, 41 destroyers. Now, the ones that we need to uh, compare ourselves to are really the Italians and the French. I mean, the British, of course, as well, but I'm going to try to ignore that issue. So, the Italians have five more pre dreadnoughts than we do. Obviously, they do have additional ones building here. They have 8 armoured cruisers, they have 11 light cruisers. So we do match them on light cruisers. We will match them shortly on heavy cruisers. We do actually have an advantage in destroyers, only a very slight one. Uh, the disadvantage of the Italians is obviously they do have a larger coastline to protect. At least we only have to worry about the Adriatic here. Is diplomacy all loosey-goosey? <laughs> loosey-goosey. Yeah, pretty much. It is pretty much loosey-goosey. I love that time, by the way. Now the French. 9, uh, 6, 19. Yeah, the French have more light cruisers here, 30 destroyers. And the French have to balance that across an empire. The Italians do not, and of course we don't either. We do have small guns here. The Italians were 12 inches, the Russians 12, the Germans 11, and the Americans 12. Okay, so we do uh, share. Okay, at least we're in joint last place then with terms in terms of gun caliber. Which, yeah, that's not too bad. At least we have Germany to hang out with. So first things first, we're going to bang up the actual research budget over here. Well, yeah, just be careful of illegal AI designs. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the torpedo technology to high here. There's really no reason not to. Considering the fact that we actually do have an advantage in it, I think we really need to push that as much as absolutely possible. Okay, ship design. Turrets and gun mountains. AP projectiles is always very handy as well. I'm going to, of course, put this too high. Hmm. Armor development isn't a bad idea. Yeah, I want to try and reduce the amount of priorities I do have, so at least the priorities are indeed priorities. So I'm going to go with naval guns, torpedo technology, and armor development. If we can actually discover more advanced armor... Well, if we can discover more advanced ways to actually construct ships with more advanced armor schemes, then that would probably be a better idea. Mike gives an advantage. Actually, let's go back and take a look at the actual naval guns here. So I've got 11-inch guns and minus one quality. I don't have 8-inch guns, which is rather strange. I mean, if I've got a... Mm, fair enough. Jesus Christ, can you imagine having 20-inch guns? That is insane. I didn't realize you could actually... Up oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay, well, that's really handy then. Okay. We're going to throw the intelligence effort against everybody. I'm not gonna lie, it might see us actually fall out with other nations, but if I can grab their sweet, sweet, juicy research, then I would be very happy. So, 12 months, 10 months, 11 months. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Vienna class that we have being built here. Okay. God, it, it's basically just a heavy... Uh, it's <laughs> it's uh, in effect what would be a uh, heavy cruiser of later periods. It's just slightly larger than an armoured cruiser. 
The 8 inches of Beltane Budburn. 8.5 inches on the actual turrets. Okay, how do these guns actually look? Ooh, that penetration leaves a lot to be desired. Yep, yeah, okay. We have to really try and just throw some 11 inch guns on whatever we have here, really. In fairness, it might not be a bad idea to actually consider rebuilding the Kaiser class. I mean, these guys are basically just heavy cruisers, I'm not gonna lie. If I was to rebuild this ship, then oh my lord, look at the size of the thing. It's tiny. Right, so I can replace the machinery here. I could drop the speed by a knot. Okay. I could potentially get rid of these actual tertiary guns. I don't think they're worthwhile. We do have heavy secondaries here, so that's uh, something we can consider, perhaps. Now, I can't remember how many submerged torpedo tubes I can have. Okay, so I can have a forward submerged torpedo tube. That's going to be handy. Uh, we might as well try and grab as many submerged torpedo tubes as we are legally able to take. Yep, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's worthwhile. So at least we do have some additional weight here. But it does mean that we have the, uh, well, the ability to launch torpedoes from basically all ends of the ship for the most part. It's not quite 360, as obviously they're not on any um, torpedo mounts. But that's not too bad. If something does near us, or if we do have to take something out, we could always potentially near the enemy and have a go with the torpedoes from the actual battleship. I mean, I don't know how many times a battleship has actually torpedoed another battleship, but uh, let's see if we can actually set that historical precedent a little bit earlier, perhaps. Okay. We do have central range uh, range fighters, so that's nice. Obviously, yeah, it's even that, I'll just actually have the gun itself. Right. Hmm. I can't upper armor it. I could obviously take armor from the turrets, perhaps. And we could take a look at up gunning it. That's going to be the only way we can maybe uh, make this a salvageable ship, really. Yeah, so I have two here on the front and one on the rear. Um, I could pay for that addition to the weight bear, perhaps. Let's see, is that legal? Right. I may have to have it actually rebuilt with single turrets. We'll see how that looks. Is that legal? Okay. Um, turret plus Y. Turret plus A. Uh, illegal caliber gun number change in turrets. Hmm. Okay. So I can't give it larger turrets as such. Let's see, is there a caliber I can get away with? No, unfortunately. Hello there, racer. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome to the stream. Okay. You may remove turrets, but not add turrets or change the number of guns and turrets with the same caliber. Yeah. Uh, using a screen to destroy to fend off the smaller boats would definitely be good, yeah. I mean, this is it. I mean, secondary guns are alright. I mean, I, I don't believe in masses and masses of secondary guns. Um, I think they have their value, but I'd say they're probably more useful on, like, armoured cruisers and heavy cruisers, really. Or light cruisers as well. Hmm. It really doesn't leave me much in the way of options here. Okay. So, I wonder then, let's take a look. I mean, I do have access to the triple turret. Oh no, I don't have access to the triple turret. That's weird, I thought I had access to triple turrets. Strange. Hmm. Well, I've got double turrets anyhow. Let's see. Oh yeah, <laughs> I actually don't even have 8-inch guns, do I? I do have 7-inch guns. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I think we are limited on what we can really do with her. So what we're going to have to do then is just open her up for rebuild. Can I perhaps make that a... Uh... No, okay. Yeah, we've got our hands tied behind our backs here, really. 
I was hoping I could try to make an actual, just basically an armored cruiser as such. And but what we'll do here then is we'll add the additional submarine, uh, well, submerged mounts. There we go. Right, that's fine. I'll drop a not a speed. Am I able to? Right, there we go, replace the machinery. Right now, okay. I can drop some speed there. Um, I mean, as far as it goes, there, there's really not a whole lot I can do with this, baby. Worth perhaps having the UK or Germany make your ships. Yeah, it would probably be a good idea. We're going to have to rely on that for the most part. I mean, this is a rebuild of a pre-existing ship of the Legacy Fleet. I'm just trying to make them actually somewhat more useful. And it might be the case we just have to leave them there. Yeah, torpedoes for faster ships. I mean, these are submerged. It's just giving them a little bit more in the way of teeth. And of course, I could clear all the actual torpedo mounts over here. Yeah. I might not just have the technology to really do much with it at this moment in time. Uh, so I don't think we can do that as of uh, this moment. Okay, I have 13,000 tons to play with. That's not too bad. Okay, spend some of that. Ooh, okay. Fair enough. Almost did that. I don't have any funds there. Right. Uh, let's see. What does the other class look like? How does the uh, Vienna look? Hello there, Doomsday. How you doing there, my friend? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so the Vienna class has 9-inch guns. Yeah. It's pretty much the same as the Kaiser class. There's not really much in them. They're just basically glorified armored cruisers. Hello there, Battling Geezer. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you guys here. Really is. And if you guys aren't uh, following me on Twitch, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could follow me on Twitch. I'm going to attempt to go for, like, a Twitch partnership and, like, really try to go. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is uh, stream to Twitch. And then, obviously, while I'm doing this, I'm recording the video as well. So I'm recording the actual stream. And then, obviously, I'll break the stream up into 30-minute segments uh, to upload onto the YouTube. So, obviously, it makes it easier for people who want to have that uh, shorter, shorter dose. For, uh, obviously, you still have the option. All the episodes will be there anyhow. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our heavy cruisers, our armoured cruisers. See, they're mounting 6-inch guns. They do have 22 knots of speed, 4 inches of belt armour. Hmm. So if I replace your mach uh, machinery here. Yeah, that is a uh, illegal design if I've ever seen one. Okay, we'll not have to touch that one. And <laughs> just it's that we've got that. Right, we do have a lot of variation of the light cruisers here. Wow, okay. How heavy is the heavy cruiser? 6,600 tons. This is... Wow, okay. This is actually the same weight... And we've only just started here, literally only just started. We haven't advanced a single month as of yet. I'm just taking a look at the actual legacy fleet here and just deciding what to do with it. But yeah, this bad boy over here is actually the same weight class. This is actually strange. We've got guns over here. When it, yeah, we've got turrets with no guns. What's this about? That's just actually... Um, That's really strange, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, if I've uh, if there's an underdog, I'll choose the underdog. I really do enjoy going with that adversity. Okay. I don't think you can actually increase our weight, of course not. Okay. So we've got a secondary battery there of 12 3 inch guns, yeah. They're not exactly amazing, are they? Really not much to do with those. I could potentially upgun them to 6-inch guns. That could potentially be worthwhile. Oh, that's awesome, the Aereo. Rio? Aereo. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I like that, challenge me. I really do. Okay, so I can't go for exactly... Uh, I'm going to have to go for the 5-inch guns, aren't I? Hmm. In fairness, I'm going to get rid of these secondary guns here. And we'll go ahead and add additional guns on if we're able to do so. So we'll go with these single inch, well, these single um, mounts here. So port forward, port aft. 
Okay, those are illegal. Obviously, I need to have them further back then. I was actually... Con no, okay. No, that'd be kind of bad. Whoops. Okay, just get revolver turrets here at the moment. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do... I'm going to need some double turrets. How many double turrets can I actually have here? Right, port forward wing... Is that legal? Okay, so the rate of fire would be reduced by 20%. I can live with that. Uh, protected cruisers can have double turrets in position A and Y only. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, single turrets here. So decrease the guns. Decrease, okay. But that's legal. Okay, that works absolutely brilliant. Right, wings. Give me the wings, people. Midship wing. Oh, those are doubles, okay. Decrease that's a single gun. That's the aft, okay. The ship is overweight at the moment. Uh, it looks like I can add a number two guns here. I'm gonna say... Port wing, starboard wing? Yep, there we go, okay. Right. You may add single shielded mounts of six inches caliber, but not casemate or double triple turrets, what? Uh, or double or triple turrets. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think it's really fun, actually, when you have to really strive. JKFG. Okay, I'm just going to quickly delete them. The game might have seen them added as... Right, make sure that there's a... Uh... Okay, let's try adding them slowly. Okay, so they'd have to be six inch. Oh, that's strange. What's the actual issue here? We a little bit confused there. Hmm. It may be to do with them being perhaps too close together, something of that nature. But it doesn't seem to allow me to want to, uh, it doesn't seem to want me to do that. Uh, but that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so I can't increase the amount of armor here. Uh, but we do actually have more guns and we have a better layout of the actual guns. I'm going to actually add additional torpedoes. Right, there we go. Okay. Give them another fire control position, just so, uh, yeah. It's not just knocked out, and then that's it, isn't it? Hmm. Interesting. From what I understand of bulged, uh, does that mean that obviously would have a bulge here at the front, so would that theoretically make it easier sailing? As in, like, less water resistance? So, if I'm understanding that right, I'm not entirely sure, or does it mean, like, bulges in there's, um... I'm not entirely sure what it's actually referring to, but as far as I can understand, I think the bulges perhaps, uh, perhaps are the front of the ship here. That's really strange. I don't actually understand the bulge one. And uh, does any of you here in the chat actually know what that one means? But either way, I mean, it's giving me additional weight. As far as I can tell, we're not losing any, uh speed here so yeah I'm, I'm all up I'm all in for that I mean that works out fine for me yeah anti-torpedo bulge see that's what I'd be thinking it's either an anti-torpedo bulge or it's actual bulge at the front of the ship 
But either way, it's giving me additional tonnage, so I'm going to work with that. As far as I can tell, we're not going to lose any knotage here. Okay, usually that gives you additional weight for reduced speed. Well, that's fine by me. It looks like we are... I mean, even if I lose two knots of speed, that's fine. I can, I can live with that. I can live with that. It seems as if we are going to lose any additional speed here. I mean, obviously, if I reduce the speed by one knot... Well, if I reduce the speed by one... Um, I do have a penalty here, but I think, I think this actually, um, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Oh, the RAM, okay. Yeah. This is going to be rather interesting when we actually find out what it means, but hey, if it works, it works. Okay, so I can actually throw on some additional, uh, five-inch guns here. No, I don't have any secondary armor. So it's probably not the wisest idea, really. How does this 7-inch gun compare to the 6-inch gun? Oh, apparently I have uh, more powerful. Right, 2.7. Hmm. And I could potentially give them mind sweeping gear. Maybe. And I'd love to uh, increase the amount of armor over here, but I don't think I have that option. So, um... Yeah, what do we do with it? It's either give it additional guns, which I think I will do. But then again, I've got to armor them, haven't I? So it's not even worth that. I could give it more, uh, ammunition. Hmm. But I'll give it, I'll give it the actual minesweeping gear just for the hell of it, just so we actually have it available. Uh, better to have it, yeah, why not, we'll go for that. It gives me uh, a little bit of utility there, doesn't it? So yeah, we'll have, um, just, just throw that on there, I guess we'll go with that then. At the moment I can't really see much else we can do with it, but at least... In the future, we'll be able to uh, do more, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, only DDs and MS. Okay, that's that's fine. I guess we have 139 tons that we can play with in the future, then. Because at the moment, I really can't see anything else that we can do. Right, we'll have you rebuilt, then. Not quite yet, as I can't afford it. But soon. Soon. Okay, we're advancing first turn, by. Okay, the funds aren't going down by too much, so that's good news. Right. Let's take a look at the coastal fortifications that we do have. So we have 4-inch batteries, 6-inch batteries over here. They're all in Austria-Hungary. Let's take a look at the actual map. Yep, okay. So I'm going to imagine that they're over here then. Uh, Dalmatia. Right, 6 batteries over here then. Okay. I wish you could actually look on the actual map and see where the batteries were, or even potentially uh, position them yourself, that'd be quite nice. Base overview. Coastal fortifications. It should show me as location Austria-Hungary, I don't exactly know where they are. Hmm. I guess we'll make do then for the time being. Right. I'm going to go ahead and try the rebuild here. So rebuild the ship. Oh, that's monstrously expensive on our budget here. Yeah, that is very expensive. But it would mean that they'd be quite effective here. Okay, we're going to have to go over some time here then. Look at these other nations throwing down new, uh, new ships as if they can afford it. Uh, absolutely crackers.